We are on scene tonight with police in Fresno, California, showing the dangers that officers face across the country. Before we get to the body cam video, let's hear the 911 call that brought police to a museum. I just came to do a house check, and there is a gentleman walking the yard, and my basement window and my carriage house window has been broken. The museum, a Victorian-era home, was closed for cleaning. The curator said the suspect cut the alarm system's wires, pried open the front door, and was armed with a knife. Police saw the broken windows and called for backup, including a canine unit. As one officer went to examine the broken window at the carriage house, the suspect, Edgar Mendoza, walked out of the museum. Get on the ground! One Edward 13 making contact with <laughs> not compliant. Get on the ground. <laughs> Officers continued to give instructions in English and Spanish, warning Mendoza that they would use a taser if he didn't surrender. I don't want to have to tase you, all right? Get down. Get down. Get down. Don't come to me. You know what? Get on the ground. On the ground. The suspect walked towards an officer, got close enough to almost throw a punch. The officer deployed his taser. Mendoza dropped to his knees, but he pulled off the taser's probes and then got up. Now, Mendoza grabbed a hammer from a bench and ran towards officers. They both ended up firing their weapons, hitting Mendoza, who died at the scene. The incident remains under investigation. Joining me now, Sean Six Larkin, retired Tulsa police lieutenant. Um, Six, good to see you. This is one of those uh, cases that doesn't happen that often where we see both the use of non lethal followed by the use of lethal. Yeah, exactly. You know, it, it actually happens quite a bit historically. Uh, you know, a conductive energy weapon, or what's known as a taser in, in layman's terms, um, it's designed to incapacitate the suspect, especially in incidents like this, where they've got a knife. Um, you know, he later picks up the hammer. Anything that type of way, you can uh, essentially neutralize them and put them down on the ground and take them into custody. But for a taser to work properly, ideally an officer wants a distance of about seven feet, which allows the two probes that go out to try to get about 12 inches apart that then do what we call that neuromuscular, uh, you know, incapacitation. Basically, for five seconds, it puts the guy down on the ground. I think the officer was extremely close to the suspect when he used the taser, which is why it didn't happen and he was able to pull uh, the probes out, as you mentioned. Um, the, sir, the, su the suspect refused to listen to the officer's orders. Let's take a look again at, at what happened next. I don't want to have to tase you, all right? Get down. Get down. Get down. Don't come to me. You know what? Get on the ground. On the ground. You know, you, you mentioned that, that the guy almost got too close to them, but it's always a tough call, right? Because the officers don't want to have to use the taser at all. Yeah, correct. And, you know, and, and listen, the officers did things right on this. When they had, uh, you know, found a point of entry into the house, immediately they got on the radio. They asked for a canine to respond out there. They asked for another additional officer so they could contain the place to find, the, uh, you know, find the suspect. And then he came out. And they did it correctly. They had what's called, you know, lethal coverage, which is a firearm, transitions to less lethal, which we see there in the video. Um, and it just, you know, it, it didn't work. They're not 100% uh, proven. We've discussed this before, uh, you know, both on live PD as well as here. And some studies, some departments report that's only like 55, 59% effective and others are as high as 75%. But they made the right move to transition from the taser to the firearm when the suspect grabbed the hammer and then charged at them. Yeah, and I think that's the key is, you know, he's now running directly at them at the end. It's not just sort of, he was sort of, you know, sauntering a little bit with, before the taser. When it came to the hammer, he literally rushes them. Exactly. Yeah. You can see the escalation of force very quickly here. <laughs> Verbal commands, less lethal weapon, deadly force.
Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.